Carolina. This is Matt West at Power Chalk Headquarters, and I'm power casting today with pitching instructor Denny Tincher. Denny is both father and coach for 2008 College Player of the Year Angela Tincher, who ranks third among all time Division I strikeout leaders. Well, we're here with Denny Tincher, and Denny, thanks a lot for being a part of us today. And, and Denny's going to do a power cast of a middle school pitcher, uh, Colleen. And, and Denny, I think that I'll just sit back and let you drive. You've, you've loaded uh, Colleen's video and then a, a, another video to, to kind of walk us through how you would look at uh, not only instructing, but how you may be able to create some modeling opportunities with other pitchers. So, Denny, I'll let you take it away. Thank you, Matt, uh, and thanks for asking Let's look at a couple of things. Before we even start, we're going to start at the very beginning of the pitch with Colleen. And something that's kind of popular in some circles that we'll see is the fact that she actually draws both hands back sort of like a baseball pitcher. This creates some problems for the female because the first thing she must do is open up. In order to get her body open, that left hand must slightly lead, the glove hand, in other words, must lead the right hand. If she's going to do so, she has to do one of two things, try to hurry the left hand up and or slow the right hand down, and now we have the body out of sync. I don't really like that because it's, it's very hard for them to get open from this position. Normally, I teach dropping that glove hand down in front of the ball as you go back so it would actually hit the right hand, covering the ball so the batter can't see the ball because the batter wants to see the ball to begin with. So, so I would rather hide the ball from the batter until the point at which we get started. Um, until we actually started through the circle, I guess I would say. Now, as we move forward and remove the mark, I'm going to go in a super slow motion and just let you see some things that she starts doing as we go forward. Uh, Colleen, in this case, starts to bring the glove up, but we don't get a lot of glove height. Uh, a lot of drills that we teach in softball that have been taught with good intentions limit the glove height. So what's happening, she's not sure what to do with the left hand, and it becomes an imbalance issue at this point. It, it keeps her from opening up and getting real comfortable. And what it's also doing is forcing her down too soon. As you'll notice here, this foot is going to come down too soon. And what she's going to do is come down heel first, and that's going to rock everything onto the front foot, taking away any resistance. As we move further along, just frame by frame, at this point, I would like to have the body a little more open. She's really fighting, trying to get her body open, and it's not open so that the shoulder can rotate through. And it's creating a couple of problems. In addition to those problems, the fact that we're not really open, uh, at this point, let me back this up just a little. The hand should be rotated so that the ball is facing third base right at this point. What we're seeing is that she doesn't get rotated, so she has to rotate it very quickly between right where it is right now and the top of her head as she goes over the top. And that quick rotation is already forcing that elbow to bend, throwing that elbow, as you can see, right here where the arm is getting crooked, is throwing the elbow away from the body. And that's going to make things difficult for her. So in all, a number of inefficiencies, it's not that we need to change a lot of things. We just need to get some barriers out of the way so that Colleen can be extremely effective. We'll run through the rest of the pitch. You'll see that she does come down heel forward. And now her back leg is stuck. She gets no resistance, so she has to try to drag the back leg forward. And that gets her weight forward, squaring her shoulders and making her very inefficient. If you understand female biomechanics, the last thing we ever want to do is have the shoulders facing toward the batter. Uh, very unhealthy position. We have to deal with injuries a lot as a result of that. It also makes it incapable for the back leg to come forward. It's just kind of dragging up and has no particular purpose. Now, there are three or four things I would work with this pitcher on. Number one, open sooner, use the left hand more efficiently, try to land on the ball of the foot if I were to summarize some of the things I'm looking for. Now, here's another young pitcher, and let's just take a quick look and see what she does as she goes forward. Uh, moving forward with Megan, good low. She's just getting ready. She's very relaxed. Now, watch as she starts out. See where the glove hand comes to? That's where I'd like for it to come with Colleen. The glove hand is over here. It is hidden the ball, and it's in an efficient position where it can lead as we start to go forward. Starting forward now, now watch the height she gets off of that glove hand, expanding the pecs, gaps, and the lats. So that the whole upper body is coming together with balanced power, and that creates energy. And notice how Megan at this point is already throwing those shoulders and hips in an open position, 
which is very much of an advantage for the female biomechanics. She comes forward, solid landing on the ball of the foot. Again, that creates resistance. And you'll notice how this ball, as she comes forward, let me back that up just a little bit, so you can see as she's starting forward, she has about uh, six inches per frame of movement. If you're watching the ball, if we're doing a stop action, we get about six inches per frame of ball movement. But when she gets that resistance, watch that six inches suddenly turn into 18 inches per frame when we get right about here. That's called acceleration created by resistance with a real strong backside. And look at the body angle at this point. That's what I'm looking for out of Magnus. So if I'm looking for one thing out of Colleen, uh, I want her to get open sooner. One other thing would be open, uh, use that glove hand correctly. And third, get resistance and keep the hips back. Do not square to the batter. That's very unhealthy. We have to deal with that injury, the injuries that, that uh, causes a whole lot in our business. So, Matt, Benny, that's the way Benny, what's interesting when I listen to you is that, uh, you know, my baseball background where we're, we're, we're throwing the ball overhand, it's interesting that we focus on that front arm position a lot as a lever. We, we talk an awful right. lot about landing on the ball of our feet and then right. pulling that, uh, that front arm through to open us up. And it sounds like to me there's some uh, correlations there to what you're teaching. And, and we're just uh, uh, delighted to have had you here and share that information with Colleen. And, again, we hope we get, we get an opportunity to talk to you again. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Matt. Girls, if you're not already on Power Chalk, go to www.powerchalk.com, grab a trial account, and upload your pitch or swing. And if you're interested in having it considered for one of our pro coaches to take a look at, simply add the word Chalk Talk This to the video tags. That's Chalk Talk This as one word in the tag field. This is Matt West saying thanks for watching and thanks for supporting youth sports by supporting Power Chalk.